that was connected to the city of London in the sense that I was very interested in the kind of urban environment in which there are uh, multiple realities happening at the same time. Uh, what I mean is that uh, London is a city that is very sort of multicultural, very, very um, complex in a way. You can find a place where there are, say, there is a mosque and there is a bingo hall and there is a, is a strip club. And it's all in the same street, but these people never actually meet. They, they, they find themselves in the same environment, but they never cross or they never make contact. And I thought I wanted to find these places in London where, where these multiple realities, which you can call also psychogeographies, um, exist and, um, and try to make portraits of people there. This was the first idea, and then the London bombings came, and I thought, well, it is very difficult to approach people that on the street that you don't know. I let the project be um, in resting for about four years, and then I had some time to start it again, and that's how it then developed. In every case, um, as far as the sort of the ethics of the problem uh, of the film is concerned, and as far as the personal involvement of myself is concerned, um, it was always on the edge. Um, and the edge was between my personal involvement and making the difference between sort of the, the, the private side of the, the film and the, um, the, the portrayal side of the film. And using the telephone, by the way, was, was, an, was very helpful because it already, the, the telephone already belongs to this private sphere. So you're already inside of this personal element. And um, then the question was, in a real life situation, where do you start filming and where do you stop filming? So, um, but uh, this, the problematics of ethics were, were also more conventional in the sense that I was filming people who were sleeping in public and uh, I sometimes felt a bit uncomfortable because I didn't ask them whether I could do it. And um, so I stopped doing that at some point. Uh, because I felt uncomfortable with it. Although I th felt afterwards, when I was using these images in, 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 the, in the film, that it wasn't in no way sort of uh, exploitative. So I felt I'd take the risk and, and, and use these images because they were important for the film. Otherwise, I think that um, the, uh, uh, the, the personal involvement was already ingrained in the DNA of the idea because uh, if you look at the title of the film, people I could have been, the, behind that is the imagination that there is some kind of chance element in the fact that I am who I am and that I could have just as easily be, been someone else. And so, uh, in a way, you can look at these people also as reflections of myself. On the level of um, my involvement and the question of what happens after the film, I think there was, um, how shall I say, what the film shows is the dynamic of a, a developing friendship. I meet these people, we become friends, there's some kind of mutual interest, and that is the, the, the mutual interest and is, is a, the, the, the common element that we have together. So this mutual in interest also went beyond the film in a way. Um, let's say with Sandrine, it was obvious that we had a, an affair, and with uh, Steve, there was also a mutual interest in terms of curiosity. Uh, Steve was very um, happy. First, he was puzzled that I was interested in his life because he said, "You know, my life is not interesting." So um, he was he was happy that I was someone was there that was was interested in his life, and I was interested in him because I felt that he was, his life was so strange that um, I felt um, it very difficult to understand how someone can live like he does. And it did also answer a few questions about homelessness and vulnerable people for me, for myself, in terms of that. I think that his, um, his, his, his addiction was um, irrational. You can't explain it by anything. I mean, you, you might find experts and psychologists who can find some something that happened in his life, but I don't, I think there was something much stronger inside of him that made him be um, 
the person who he is because he was a wonderful person and very very strong and so there's this is fascinating aspect of about someone who's very strong but at the same time also very destructive uh, auto destructive and so these are things that that um, put me as a filmmaker on sort of on the on the border between where where can I have a function in his life where can I help but you can't help you, you, there's nothing you can do if you want uh, in especially in the UK there are all kinds of structures that that, that would be there for him to help him but th th this th the kind of life that he was leading was was much stronger than all these uh, possibilities to to escape this life and um, we are that's it yeah uh, just one